I've recently decided to invest in a teleprompter to improve and organize my videos. There are two competing and very popular options on the market today, but they are very different, and one of them was an absolute deal breaker for me. Let's dive in. So why a teleprompter and why now? I'm always looking for ways to improve on my videos, both for you, the audience, and for me, who has to shoot and edit them. Before, I was either winging it or just putting down some key bulletin points to structure my videos. These are like the little butane ones that you would fill up with uh, the basic like uh, butane. If you don't feel like watching the rest of this video and you just wanna know which one I'll be returning, it's the parrot. There, video's over. But if you wanna know why and you wanna stick around, I'll be doing a full comparison. Let's talk about the features. I wanna start off by saying that both of these budget-friendly prompters are just that. They're budget-friendly. They have very similar build quality. They offer very similar apps and remotes. Both slide onto your lens via an adapter ring and are supplied with a wide range of metal rings to adapt to all kinds of lenses and focal ranges. Similar to how a screw-on ND filter would work. Both prompters require you, the user, to use a device to run your script either a phone or tablet. Now, anytime I put anything in front of my expensive glass, I'm really hesitant, but both of these products don't degrade the image enough for me to really notice, and I primarily use them for talking heads. They do restrict some light though, and change the hue of the image very, very slightly, but it can be easily fixed in post. One big difference between the two are the sizes. The Parrot Padcaster is designed to be small and out of the way. You can only use it with a cell phone as your script device, and it's also limited in the focal range and further limited by zoom lenses or tele lenses, but I'll get to that in a second. The Desview T3 is larger with some additional features, like a clamp style holder that can accept up to an 11 inch tablet as your script running device. But it does have its limitations in terms of packaging, protection, and organization. For example, the Parrot includes some nice accessories like a pouch to hold and organize all the adapter rings that are included, as well as a cleaning brush and a fiber cloth. And it offers some protection to the back of the teleprompter to protect it from dust and debris with a kind of like a piece of paper, to be honest, that slides in to block off the hole. Now, with all that being said, the T3 doesn't offer any ways to organize your accessories. Everything is literally thrown into a box. All all of the individual adapter rings are packaged separately in plastic and then they're all just kind of thrown into the box along with like cell phone accessories and holders and so forth. You do get a cloth, but that's about it. It does have a really nice way to protect the back of the unit with a screw on metal cap, but it only works with the smallest ring already attached. So if you want to use a larger ring like the 82 millimeter, the back of the unit will always be exposed. I would have liked to have seen a better solution and a little bit more organization from the company Desview. I think for the price, both manufacturers should have included a case. I mean, we're talking about even on sale, $70 for the Parrot, and I think I bought the T3 at $90. That's not chump change. I mean, you would expect at least a hard case or something to organize everything so you can carry these teleprompters around if you need to. Also, the instructions are really, really hard to follow on the T3. Now let's get to the biggest design difference between the two. The T3 has really made an attempt to keep the camera's field of view unobstructed. The mount is designed so it can move up and down, keeping your cell phone or your tablet out of the way, and the glass is tapered, offering a much larger viewing angle. Another thing is it doesn't include a hood, which can further obstruct the viewing angle of wide angle lenses. Now, of course, this makes the entire unit much larger. That really is the biggest pro and con to each device. The Parrot is smaller, lighter, and more out of the way, but has a very limited focal. The T3 is larger and heavier and has more features built into it with the ability to accept an 11 inch tablet. And it also has a couple of plastic hot shoes if you decide to use them, you can attach some things to the top of the teleprompter. But the biggest pro to the T3 is the versatility in your choices of lens selection. 
and the wider focal ranges. Let's take a moment to talk about the apps and the remote. I found both devices have pretty much the same free app and remote performance. I know a lot of folks have complained about the remote or the app for either or, but after owning both units, I have issues with both of them. But they are very similar. I prefer the Parrot app because it's easier to link your Dropbox and upload scripts. But the Desview app is limited on the Parrot app, so just keep that in mind. I also wanted to mention that the Desview app is more limited with the remote in general. For example, you can't pull up and navigate the menu with the remote like you can with the Parrot. And the scroll joint stick doesn't really do anything except pause and play the script when you toggle down. This is basically what I'm talking about here. If you toggle down, the script starts up, toggle back down, it pauses. Toggle in any other way, it does absolutely nothing. You can't even pull up the menu with the remote and you know select what you gotta do. You have a button right here that's very clicky and very audible, and that also pauses and plays your app, and then you can slow down the script, jump up a page, and so forth. If you're using the Parrot app and the remote control of the T3, you really can't adjust the speed of the scroll as much as you could with the Parrot remote. It seems to only have a dead slow feature or a fast feature. So if you're trying to find in the middle, you really don't have that option. I find myself just using the touch screen. Now the biggest con to the T3 app is I personally couldn't get it to import any of my scripts off of my computer and I don't see how it's possible. The app is also clearly a third party Chinese app with Chinese instructions on how to import if you're looking for the import option. And it also asks you to use another third-party Chinese app to access your files so you can import your scripts. No thank you. The T3 app needs some serious work and the ability to sync your scripts or upload them. Otherwise, you're forced to type them out on your tablet or on your phone. There's some better overall prompter apps that you can pay for, but be warned, they probably won't work that great with the remotes that are provided. I just use the Parrot app because it's free, and for the settings functions that are missing while using the remote, I just use my finger and the touchscreen on my phone. Okay, now let's switch focus to the Parrot Padcaster. And let's talk about why the Parrot was a deal breaker for me and why it's going back. You guessed it. It's primarily because it has limited focal range and the inability to use anything wider than 35 millimeters. And it's even worse with a zoom lens or a tele lens like currently my Sigma 24 to 70. Now, I knew about the 35 millimeter restrictions before purchasing it, and I'm not the type that would just impulse buy something. I actually spend a lot of time researching something and it drives my wife absolutely crazy. But because the 24 to 70 is a larger diameter lens at 82 millimeters, it further increases the likelihood of obstructions by design with the Parrot. So on the 24 to 70, you actually can't go wider than about 45 millimeters, but it's actually closer to 50 millimeters. The problem goes away with my Sony 35 millimeter 1.8. It's a prime lens with a 55 millimeter diameter. Recently, I've been usually shooting my talking heads at 35 millimeters anyways, but I do like to go wider sometimes. Now, the tighter you go, the further back you must push the camera. And I just don't have that kind of space. So I really wanted the versatility and the ability to use any lens I own, including the 24 to 70 Sigma. With the T3, the widest focal length that you can use is 24 millimeters. And I've confirmed at 24 millimeters, the Sigma 24 to 70 has no obstructions. And for me, the choice was clear. The T3 was the clear winner. That's it for me, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.